Today's WTF Wednesday. I have one under, I think it's probably a weird thing found. Mm -hmm. Pictorial planning. This is where a project prepares a timeline or a schedule of what needs to happen, mm -hmm. but they do it pictorially rather than in a mathematically modelled kind of way. So yeah. they create a plan on a page okay. maybe or a schedule of sorts, something that I call a Gantt-like Timeline. Um, yeah. Yes. It has Road the illusion map. of being a Gantt chart, but it mm. isn't a Gantt chart because it's done pictorially mm. using blocks of activity that are manually dragged around and placed on a page mm. rather than modelling in things like durations, effort, dependency, baseline slippage that kind of thing mm -hmm. useful communication tool absolutely it's a very good communication tool there are some tools out there that enable you to summarize a proper gantt chart in a nice looking format for yes. communication to stakeholders and things like that it's not much use as a control tool whilst i have no problem with pictorial planning in itself mm -hmm. it doesn't tell you if i change this activity here at the beginning so if i change the duration of that activity what effect does it have later on the delivery on. date mm -hmm. Or if I put several people on this activity, what effect does it have? It doesn't give you any visibility of critical path. I was just going to say, to a critical path. It doesn't give you any predictive ability whatsoever. So whilst I have no problem with using pictorial representations of plans for communication, mm. I think there is a huge risk in equating that pictorial representation with the schedule itself. Yes. Because they are not, not equal. They are not one and the same thing. So I think there's real value, and we've covered this before in terms of risk management, I think, so I'm going to point up there and hope I put something there in future. You talk really nicely about the ability to carry out a thought experiment in a risk-free, stress-free environment of saying, okay, if we do things this way, what will happen? And you just can't do that with that kind of pictorial plan. You need to create a proper schedule. The difference between a plan and a schedule, schedule just to cover that one. A plan involves elements of costing and resourcing and all that that kind of stuff as well as activity and time so we're talking purely about the schedule here of activity and deliverables in time so a gantt chart yeah. that's a schedule the real benefit of doing a schedule properly in terms of signing resources to it and duration effort and all that kind of stuff and modeling dependency is that if you change an activity at one base in the schedule you can see what impact, impact that's going to have later on yes. you can predict to a degree what's going to happen and i'm not suggesting that projects should model that in excruciating detail for the whole of the duration of the project mm. only for as far ahead as you can reasonably see so mm. you know if, if things are likely to change after the next quarter then okay model the next three months in detail but after that you can yes. just have blocks of activity yes what do you think what are your thoughts and experiences on that very very similar very similar and i think that what i would refer to as that planning horizon is really key because yep. as you say things change those things mm -hmm. aren't necessarily always within your control or even the organization's control there could be external factors that mean things change so if you're too wedded to a real level of detail too far out that will create problems in itself in terms of being inflexible and then perhaps going back to a, a previous discussion topic of ending up delivering the wrong thing, perhaps. Yeah. People might say that's what the advantages of using an incremental or agile type approach as opposed to a, mm -hmm. a more sequential, predictive, waterfall type approach to yeah. uh, project management. But I'd say, well, that depends on the type of project that you're running. If you're yeah. running the type of project where you're in control of deliverables and the timelines associated with those deliverables, because say, for example, you're developing stuff in a software team, that's fine. You can use that mm -hmm. sort of incremental approach running. But if mm -hmm. Say you've got the kind of supply chain where you're having things manufactured uh, a long way away in China, for example, time. Yeah. and you have to factor into your scheduling 16 weeks for a ship to get from Shanghai to the UK via the Suez Canal, mm -mm. then that is going to have a 
huge bearing on quite how flexible and adaptable your plan can be. So you're going to have to be quite predictive in this. If you've got some sort of external event that happens and did happen not so long ago, where the Suez Canal or the Panama Canal, whichever one it was, gets blocked and stuff can't get through for days and that creates a backlog mm. and so on and so on and so on. You need to know what kind of effect that's going to have on what you're trying to achieve. And you're not going to get that from moving rectangles around in a graphic presentation package. You need to know what the dependencies are and what knock-on effects are going to be. And you can only achieve that through a mathematical modeling approach through something like a proper and in inverted commas Gantt chart. Yeah. Critical path, dependencies, planning horizon, 